Hey, didn't see you there. Hello, it's me, your favorite time-lapse photographer's favorite time-lapse photographer. Today we're in Bank, London, England, where we'll be making some bank today. Speaking of making bank, this video is sponsored by Lyft. More about them later. So, you've been shooting lots of time-lapses, but lots of hyperlapses, and you have recently watched the not yet award-winning London, thank you very much, London time-lapse showreel by yours truly, and you're thinking, you know what? I wanna make a showreel too. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you my top tips on how to make a banging showreel based on my decade-long experience as a time warper, someone who specializes in time-lapse and hyperlapse photography. But in case you are a normal video creator, we'll be able to translate all these concepts into normal videography as well. So, I've let's been go. infected with restless whispers and cheats that manifested in words and the lies that you speak. I've been infected with restless. But let's start at the start. The reason we are here at Bank, it is an incredibly interesting location. So many people are afraid to leave their house. They shoot photos and videos of their cat in the living room or their dog in the backyard or a tree in the backyard. Good things happen when you leave your comfort zone. So go out and find an interesting location. You can use geotags on Instagram or other social media platforms to find stuff that is visually interesting, sort of a virtual location scout. The reason we're here at Bank today is because there are just so many different things to shoot. We've got a ton of people, a ton of interesting architecture. We've got flowers, we have red buses, a lot of hustle and bustle. So leave your comfort zone of your house as fast as you can to go and find something that is more interesting because in those locations, you'll also be able to shoot a more diverse range of shots. If you are cutting from one shot to a shot that's kind of similar to another shot that's kind of similar, that is just very bland and boring. You want to have a wide range of shots to choose from. Wide lenses, tight lenses, contrast, life is yin yang, ups and downs. You got to go through the lows to appreciate the highs and that is generally everything. So contrast, great contrast in your shot selection by diversifying. Besides bringing contrast into your shot selection, you also want to bring in some contrast or some variety into your frame rate. And let's wait for these guys to pass by. If your camera has the option to shoot slow motion, I highly recommend that you do. Slow motion footage and time-lapse photography live on the opposite sides of the temporal spectrum, but they are complementary. They work together really well. So get a little bit of both, speed ramp one into the other and boom, you're golden. To get the most beautiful, most cinematic looking footage, you want to make sure that you are using the correct shutter speeds, which is based on your frame rate that we just talked about. If you're shooting for 25 frames per second video, you want to use a shutter speed on average of about 1 50th of a second. If you translate that to time lapse, if you're shooting with a two second interval, you're gonna try and make sure that your exposure time is at one second. So half your interval should be your exposure. On a bright sunny day like today, you're going to wanna use filters for that. In this case, a neutral density filter, which acts like a pair of sunshades for your camera. Now, this brings me to the next tip, polarizers. On a bland, bright, sunny day like today, you can make things look so much better by using a simple circular polarizer. Just have a look at the shot here where everything is a little bit washed out and a little bit bright, but then once you engage that circular polarization, things become a little bit more contrasty, a little bit more saturated, a little less haze is around, and you can even remove reflections from streets or cars and other windows as well. Don't think I've got to show you much more than that. Speaking of showing more, a lot of beginners choose to go for an extremely wide angle lens, when in reality, it is much more interesting to shoot with a tight lens because it allows you to isolate your subjects more. Then bring some stuff into your foreground, move the camera around ever so slightly, and you're really increasing that feeling of depth. Speaking of depth, how low can you go? We see, experience, and feel the world constantly from eye level, which gets a little bit boring. So change up your shots by going either very low or by super high. An elevated viewpoint like a staircase or a rooftop, if you're lucky enough, can really make things look so much more interesting. Now, I know I am very lucky with my East London rooftop, but you know what? I'm also paying a stupid amount of money for it, so we'll enjoy that while it lasts. Now, what about this balcony? That was a great access point that I got for myself. How did I do that? Well, I literally just messaged the person running the account that was posting all the reposts of this fancy tower near where I live that I could see every day, and I saw all these famous photographers going onto the balcony and shooting all these amazing views, and I just went out and messaged them and asked if I would be allowed to come and shoot. And you know what, they said yes. And that leads me to, it's a, it's a famous saying in Belgium, it goes like a neerhede in jou kunt krijgen, or at least in Antwerp, that's our dialect over there. Translates to, you, you have a no, but you might get a yes, which is of course Michael Scott's 
famous saying, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Anywho, now that you are building a nice selection of diverse contrasting footage, it's time to think about how you're going to piece all of this together. Now, a few things make this as fun and as easy as a great track. Not only will great music allow you to follow the buildup of energy with your visuals paired to the audio, you'll be able to take your audience through these emotions up into a climax point, which definitely elevates the viewer's experience. It really is an enormous, sadly sometimes overlooked layer of emotional connection between you, the creator, and the viewer or the watcher, your audience, that I believe you must pursue as a creator to engage your audience even more. Now, as I mentioned at the start for this video, I have partnered with my friends over at Licked, who I've used and worked with a lot in the past, including my London time-lapse showreel. That was a Licked track and that was incredibly well received because it was a track that was so much fun to edit to. I've always loved editing to electronic glitch style, trip hop style music, and there are plenty of tracks on there. In fact, Licked now has over 1 million charts topping tracks from famous labels, from famous musicians, people that you know and love that you listen to on the daily. I was far too And you can license all these tracks for your YouTube channel with no copyright claims or monetization issues. If you've been in the creator industry for a while, you know this is truly groundbreaking. There are just no other websites that allow you to license tracks like this for use on your channel. With a simple and affordable pricing model and now also a huge new high quality stock music library, you will have no problem finding the track that is going to make your show reel or your next video piece so much better. If you're looking for some really great, unique music that people love, then you can support me and this channel by checking out Licked via the link below. And that's pretty much what I've got for you in this video. A couple of tips, a couple of pieces of advice to make better videos. I hope you enjoyed this. If there is anything you would like to add to it or if you have any questions, you know where to drop them down below in the comments. I'll try and get back to you when I can. Hope you're well. Hope you like the new lighting setup. I bought myself. Um, I'll make it. I'll make a members members only, a patron only tour soon about the new office setup. But um, yeah, I'm loving this little astronaut man. I've got a preview on my Instagram stories if you want to check that out. Anyways, enough of this Belgian waffle at the end here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you're well, and I will see you on the next video. May your skies be filled with fluffy clouds and uh, shimmering nebulas.